said to be the most evil financial tool created. And in the near future, it's estimated that 10% of the world population will be using it. In 2022 alone, there are 360 million users. And this number is said to reach 900 million in just four years. Enter Buy Now, Pay Later. A financial product that allows anyone to buy stuff that they don't need with money that they don't have. But wait a minute, isn't this just like a credit card? What's so different? What's so evil about this? Well, to answer this question, we did weeks of research, talked to many people and studied different buy now, pay later platforms. And here's what we found. The buy now, pay later industry is growing fast like a bullet. In 2022, the market is estimated at $179.5 billion. And guess what? Experts are suggesting that it will reach 3.27 trillion by 2030. Okay, just so how fast this is. Think about this. The global credit card market was valued at approximately 3.32 trillion in 2020. But credit card has been around since 1958. It took them 62 years to reach this 3 trillion dollar mark. But buy now, pay later will only take 25 years to do that. Okay, fine. This is a big industry and it's growing fast. But how is it going to affect the people and why is it evil? Well, to find out the answer, we decided to do some research. But as we search through the internet, we find that there's not many information and research done on it because it's still a relatively new industry. So we decided that the easiest way is actually compare it with a similar tool, the credit card. When it comes to credit card, numerous studies over the years have shown a correlation between credit card availability and increased household debt. Credit cards makes it easier for people to borrow money and this often lead to higher level of consumer debt. Now, many research also pointed out that households with access to credit card tend to actually spend more than those households that have no access to a credit card. Well, obviously, right? You can buy things on credit, the other one can't. And naturally, this increase in spending led to higher debt level, especially if the person is not financially literate and do not pay off their balance promptly. Many long-term studies also pointed out that sustained reliance on credit card can lead to long-term financial strain for many households, particularly households with lower income and unstable financial situation. All right, there is no doubt that current research suggests that when you have a credit tool such as credit card that are easily accessible, people will just increase in their debt level as well. I won't be surprised that buy now pay later will lead to the same results since it is even more accessible than credit cards. Ultimately, it has a lot more to do with our spending habits. So to understand why we humans are more likely to act impulsively with money, we have to go back to history to understand the lizard brain and the mammalian brain. The lizard brain is the oldest part of our brain. It is responsible for basic survival instinct like finding food and avoiding danger. This part of our brain is still with us today, guiding us in our instincts and snap decisions. And this makes sense, right? Because millions of years ago, it is a harsh environment for our ancestors. Every day is a fight for survival. Imagine coming out of your cave and getting eaten by a dinosaur. But along the way, as humans evolve, Evolve, we develop a more complex part of our brain called the mammalian brain. This mammalian brain added emotions and memory to our decision-making process, allowing us to plan to empathize and think beyond the immediate needs. Fast forward to today, despite our evolved prefrontal cortex, our lizard brain often takes the driver's seat, especially when it comes to financial decisions. This happens especially when we are under stress, excitement, and even daily pressures. This ancient brain can just override all our logic and push us towards instant gratification. This preference for immediate reward can lead us to spend rather than save. Think about it, buying the latest iPhone versus saving for retirement. And this is where many brands come in. They know exactly how our brain works because they've spent millions and millions of dollars to actually study this subject and they have been developing tactics to appeal to our lizard brain, encouraging us to spend more and think about it later. For example, 
Do you notice in a supermarket, necessities like milk or meat is often at the back of the store? This makes you walk through a bunch of other products display and maybe you will buy some other stuff along the way to get those necessities. Then, do you notice at the checkout counter, there's always many sweets being displayed there? Because by the end of your shopping trip, you're likely more tired and have less willpower than when you first walked in. So you're more likely to succumb to impulsive buying, especially when those little bit of sweets cost only a few ringgit. Okay, maybe you're thinking to yourself, you're one of those smart ones who's an exception to this. But guess what? According to a report by IRI in 2021, shoppers actually spent $6 billion in the checkout area at stores last year alone. $6 billion! And that is exactly what all these installment products does. When you're already so tired thinking about whether should you or should you not buy this expensive dress or expensive shoe, they come to you and offer an easy way out. And they know that you are likely to succumb to that least brain of yours. Here we took it to the streets to ask the people what they think about buy now pay later. Do you think buy now pay later is a good thing or a bad thing? I don't think it's like entirely like bad thing but there are certain good things about that but with some, about sometimes with some for with some younger people you don't have like like older people, they have like, like you know, younger generation, we live as if there is no tomorrow. Like. Oh. <laughs> it's bad, but I think our generation, the Gen Z generation, it's not, it's not really good mm. on self-control. But then, for like, personal like, pleasure. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> then it's a good thing. Gratification, la. Yeah. easy gratification. I think it depends on the situation juga. Mm. So uh, for me, my answer is 50-50. Uh, Usually, kalau for necessities, stuff up, really much like susu. Oh. Uh, for yeah, such a yeah, half food. But you lah, you know, sometimes in a half month, in a bulan, you touch quite half food lah. Uh. Tapi you have to know yang budget for next month, you have to pay lah for good things. Much like I mentioned just now, kalau you have to necessary for your product. Mm. So macam you have to use so untuk macam anak you really need that stuff pada hari ni bulan tak cukup duit ya yeah, you have to use it lah not good is kalau you have to follow your orang kata you could nafsu ah yeah, yes tau faham faham macam, macam baju ke hmm. kan ha. so, tu semua unnecessary, unnecessary lah. lah ok ok I, I believe it's a good thing because it depends on because um because, because you know you, you buy now you pay later so it's based on an uh, it's based on the system where, where you'll be as honest as possible as honest as possible when it comes to paying stuff. Yeah. I feel like it depends because it's like you need to be financially responsible. If you're not financially responsible, then you know you can go pretty crazy with that, which is what I did. I feel like I am not financially responsible, so I just bought many things knowing that I have a credit card and I can just, you know, go ham with it. So whether it's credit card installment or buy now, pay later, based on what they say, it's not entirely bad, right? It kind of helps us to get what we need as well. Like maybe you are a student that needs a laptop, but your family just can't afford it yet. Or maybe you are just a mother who needs to buy milk for your child. At the end of the day, tools like buy now, pay later can actually help us to solve real problems. Besides, there are quite many buy now, pay later platforms that actually offer better deals and savings when you use their service. So isn't this just a financial tool that depends on how the user use it? And why do people still think it's the most evil financial tool? Here's why. Buy now, pay later is an add-on to the current credit tools like credit card. So if you hit your credit card limit, instead of being forced to pay down your debt, you can always just turn to a buy now, pay later platform and continue spending and accumulate more debt. However, I would say that this is not really buy now, pay later's fault, right? They are just late comer in the industry. So I personally think it's more of the next point, regulation. Unlike credit cards, which is heavily regulated by central banks like Bank Nagara, there are clear rules of who are eligible to get a credit card and how much credit can a person get. However, when it comes to buy now, pay later, there is no clear regulation. There's no industry standard either. Every company has 
has their own way to judge whether do you qualify for a buy now, pay later and how much do you qualify. So at the end of the day, kinda everyone has access to buy now, pay later whether they have an income or not. This is kinda like giving away cars to anyone who wants to drive instead of only giving it to people with a driving license. And because of the loose regulation, every platform operates differently. And here is where the devil is in the details. When I studied the different buy now, pay later platforms in the market, there are some that are really great and there are some that I would say is borderline predatory. Okay, let me give you an example, grab pay later. While they do not charge you an interest, but when you are late in payment, they will suspend the account and charge an activation fee of 10 ringgit. Well, that's actually not bad, right? And they are really transparent about it and 10 ringgit is not a high fee. But think about it, if your purchase was only 20 ringgit, then you forgot to pay and your account cannot deactivate it. Then you get charged 10 ringgit. That's 50% charges, which actually I cannot be for because at one point I didn't notice that my grab pay later was on default payment mode and I did not set up a direct link to payment from my wallet. So after using a grab right, I did not do anything about it and I got charged this activation fee of 10 bucks. But on the good side of it is when you buy stuff from GrabPay later, there are quite a lot of promotions that help you save some extra money. Well, ultimately, after all that I've learned about it, I have to say buy now, pay later is actually not that bad, but it does need more regulation to ensure that consumers are protected. Why not you tell us what you think? Do you think buy now, pay later is an evil too? Share with us in the comments below.